All right, so it's no secret that proper socialization is incredibly important for giant breeds like Great Danes. But today, we're here to talk to you about seven uncommon approaches to socializing your dog. Now, what we won't be covering will be the more obvious examples of things like taking them to the dog park or going on walks. Those are all still really great and very important, but we really want you to broaden your idea for ways to socialize your dog to really expose them to a lot of different settings and elements and people and animals. So that way, as they grow and get bigger and stronger, you're able to trust them in a variety of settings and not have to worry about them as you take them out and go on different adventures with them. Now for our first tip on uncommon ways to socialize a Great Dane, I want you to think about getting a little dirty here and we're talking about going to the beach. Now whether you live on one of the coasts or you're in the middle of the country, the beach doesn't necessarily have to mean actually going to the beach and playing in the ocean, but more so going to areas that have sand and have bodies of water. Now this is important for a couple of reasons. One being that our dogs get very used to and just accustomed to running around in the grass and the dirt or perhaps paved surfaces. So by exposing them to a new element such as sand, it gives them a way just to kind of get used to these different types of surfaces. Now, in many of these areas, whether you are landlocked or on the coast here, do give you the option to expose your dog to large bodies of water. Now, while many Great Danes are the best swimmers out there, just having a level of comfort with water um, is really important. So perhaps just the ability just to kind of wade in and dip their paws in and kind of have fun and play at the beach or by a lake or some other kind of man-made body of water is really important to expose your dog to at an early age so that as they get older, they're not freaked out by these types of settings. Now, another great side effect of going to the beach is that many other families choose to bring their kids and their dogs along as well. So in addition to all these different surfaces and natural elements, your dog will also get the chance to meet a lot of people and also play and interact with their pets as well. Now, for our second uncommon approach to socialization is to really kind of stretch your comfort level from an early stage. And that's by taking your dog to a restaurant or a brewery or some other setting where there could be a large density of people, uh, but also the chances of having food and other items around that would be tempting to your dog to perhaps get their hands or paws on. Now, now this is important because you don't want to wait until they're a full grown dog before you take them to a restaurant for the very first time. Um, it's much better to get them used to coming from a very young age and just very calmly laying at your feet and not being really wound up or getting really excited about people coming by or the sounds of other things happening or the smells of food. Uh, by exposing them in really small increments, you know, time and time again as they're a younger puppy, uh, it makes them much more conducive to uh, navigating these situations when they're a much larger, larger dog here. Now, one thing that I should point out is that obviously not all restaurants allow dogs in. The best chances are if restaurants have outdoor patios or other types of outdoor seating. Those are usually the likely areas where your dog will be allowed to go to. Now, there are exceptions for service animals, but I'll focus on the kind of broader population of Great Dane owners here and just point out that these patios are kind of a better spot, but also breweries because they have these larger outdoor areas and generally speaking, don't always have quite as large of a food fair. Um, they can be much friendly in terms of allowing dogs and other pets to be brought along as well. So that way your dog can once again be exposed to all these types of new settings here. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, I should also mention that we are all about caring for Great Danes and we like to put out tips and tricks to really help you. So if this is something that really resonates with you, make sure to go ahead and give us a like and subscribe below. So that way you don't miss out on any future content. Now for our third approach, and this is one that we're unfortunately out of season here currently, but we're really excited to get going again after Memorial Day. And that is taking our Great Dane to the local farmer's market. Now, once again, this is a great way to kind of expose your dog to kind of larger groups of people. And because these are often in outdoor settings, either at a campground or perhaps a street that's been kind of temporarily shut down for a Sunday afternoon, it means that dogs in the majority of cases are actually allowed. Um, so just by getting your dog kind of used to the situation where there's a lot of people coming back and forth, um, also being that they're Great Danes, they're probably gonna get a lot of attention. Uh, so just having them used to being, you know, pet by strangers or spoken to, or having to sit quietly while you speak with a vendor, is just a really good learning experience for them over time to kind of get used to these settings where it's a little bit more chaotic than uh, the calm comfort of our home here. As you can see, Gus just lounging and taking a nap on the couch. Now for our fourth tip, I'd like to think kind of outdoorsy, and that's about taking your Great Dane to meet uh, other animals or just be really exposed to the outdoors. Now there's a couple ways to do this. One could be to take them to a local farm or 4-H setting where you obviously have mission with the owners of the property or the other animals that might be there to bring your dog on site to kind of meet them. Now this is really helpful for your Great Dane to realize that, you know, it's not just other dogs and cats that they might see around, but perhaps there's horses and cows and chickens and goats 
And there's all other types of animals that it should be important for them to just get along with and not try to chase after or antagonize. Um, so these types of settings are really great ways to kind of expose your dog to other types of animals. But obviously make sure you do so in a way where they're not kind of going after the creatures or tormenting them. That is absolutely not acceptable. Uh, so make sure you have good leash control and that they are properly trained. Uh, this is just meant as a way to kind of expose them to these settings. Um, also, obviously, you know, going out hiking where you can see other animals out on the trails, perhaps other things like birds and rabbits as well, um, just to get your dog kind of used to the outdoors and the quietness and kind of occasionally seeing these other animals as well. So for number five, we're going back to the races, and that's thinking about our kind of local events, for example, our 5Ks and 10Ks. The reason why we like taking Gus and our other dogs to these types of settings is obviously there are crowds of people where they kind of have to get used to all the changes in the chaos, but uh, also just getting them used to the kind of the external sounds. Uh, knowing that at races they often will have different horns going off for the different heats and waves that are starting, but also just, you know, music playing over loudspeakers. Um, these types of sounds and kind of a dramatic type settings are important for your dog to want to, just to get used to these new settings and not be freaked out or scared by them. So for number six, I'd like to call this kind of the twist here, and that's that while dog parks are a great way to socialize your dog, that's far too obvious. Uh, another area that you, you should also consider for socializing your Great Dane is by taking them to kid parks. Now, once again, obviously only parks that allow dogs to be brought there, uh, but understanding that just the sights and the sounds of all these children kind of running around and screaming and hollering, those are different sounds than your Great Danes are probably used to unless you have a lot of young kids at home. Um, so by exposing them to these types of settings and sounds at a park is another great way to kind of get them used to, you know, other types of humans, although smaller ones in this case. Um, also, just knowing that your dog will probably be uh, a curiosity for the kids, giving them a chance to kind of quietly pet your dog and having them just be calm and gentle around children. Um, it's just another great way to socialize them. So for our seventh tip, I'd like to continue the trend here of kind of exposing your dog to new settings. And that's not just saying that inside our home, we want to introduce them to many different strangers and people, but also taking them outside of your home and going to meet other people in their home. Now, this is especially helpful when your dog is going to visit, you know, friends at their home who also has a dog and just kind of understanding the, you know, the control situation here where they're entering another dog or another person's home. And they have to be respectful of that, not just try to dive into every set of toys or sniff and smell around, just really be respectful. Now, while this may sound overly simplistic, it's not something you should undervalue from a socialization standpoint. And just consider that once again, the kind of variety of different settings and scenarios that you can expose your Great Dane to repeatedly and as many times as possible. This will only make them a, a better and more socialized dog over time. That as they get older, allows you to take them to virtually any event where they're allowed so that way you can spend more time with them, but also allow them to kind of have fun and meet other people and just really enjoy life. So we really take socialization incredibly important. Um, it's not something that you can really mess around with when it comes to a Great Dane, which could range from anywhere from 100 pounds to 200 pounds for our larger males. Um, having a dog that's unruly and dragging you around a setting or reacting poorly can not only be dangerous for the dog, but also those around them. Uh, so socialization is really, really important. So with that, that wraps up our seven tips for uncommon ways to socialize your Great Dane. If you found this video helpful, make sure to go ahead and give us a like below and subscribe. And until next time, stay Danny, my friends. You guys, come. Come on. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. Oh. You don't want to see your face. You don't put your head up. Oh, they don't want to see your headless thing. <laughs>